There's without a doubt ones and zeros being exchanged in all streamers. So why or how could they sound different? The Lumio has been around since 2013, starting primarily as a hobby. By 2015, it was a company. By 2017, 100,000 installations of the Volumio app. 2018, and that was the first move beyond software, the Volumio Primo. 2019, 300,000 installations. And present day, they have three hardware product lines, and a Volumio product wins the EISA award for best digital source. So needless to say, business is good. The Revo carries a premium price coming in at $9.89, tax and shipping included which puts it right into the range of the Eversolo DMPA6. Today, I wanna to highlight the Revo, as well as try to break down some of the differences between devices like this. Comparing streaming devices isn't really simple. It's true, it's just ones and zeros, but there can really be more to it. We're gonna take a quick break from the review to talk about the sponsor of today's video, Aura. When I take a look at my recent calls and block calls, it's alarming to think that you're almost as likely to get a robocall these days as say your wife or kids calling. It can get to the point where you might be getting multiple calls a day. Sometimes I block them, sometimes I ignore, but it's wild to think that we have to screen every call that comes in on a device that we pay a premium for. These robocalls are completely out of control. Do you know what a data broker is? It's a business that gathers information from a variety of sources, processes it, and then prepares to sell it to other organizations with the primary purpose of targeted marketing, like robocalls. In all likelihood, they know your birthday, your religion, your income, your address, your shopping habits, plus much more. I personally don't like the idea of random people, companies, or even hackers having access to my personal data. And this is where Aura, today's sponsor, can help. Aura will automatically send removal requests on your behalf during the free 14-day trial. Really nothing to lose here, it's a great deal. You get an app and a service that really does the work of several all in one. You get a service that cleans up your online presence. It works behind the scenes to get you removed from data brokers, which in turn can reduce all those robocalls. Credit alerts, which will alert you for anyone trying to open up a credit card with your information. A VPN for safe browsing, keeping you anonymous and encrypted. Virus and malware protection on your computer, as well as your mobile device. A password manager, keep things organized, all in one protected location. Even helps you manage what your kids can do on their devices. Restrict apps, screen time limits, provide windows of use. Take your information back. Just click on the link in my description. Go try Aura for two weeks, absolutely free. They're giving you a free two week trial here. If you like it, keep using it. Really a lot offered here. Again, the link is https colon slash slash aura.com slash koikendall, linked below in my description as well. Nothing to lose here. Put your information in and see what comes up. Slow down these robocalls and get protected. Now let's get back to the video. As I mentioned, Volumio has three hardware products to date. The Integro, which is an amp, DAC, headphone amp, and streamer all in one package. And then the Primo, which removes the amplifiers and focuses on being a dedicated streamer packaged with an ESS 9038 DAC. And then the Revo, which I have on hand today, and that's their top tier solution for digital streaming. No DAC on board, this is purely a digital transport that offers a variety of connection options. I wanna first mention the Volumio software in case you've had any run-ins with it in the past. I've had a really good experience with it on the Revo, but I also wanna mention you may have had different results with Volumio in the past with other manufacturers. One thing to keep in mind is that some manufacturers use unauthorized software, which will not have as clean of an integration as those who work through the Volumio official OEM program. If the manufacturer is operating outside of Volumio support, your results may vary. Good news here is this was obviously a product in-house for them, so everything has been really smooth. The advantage the Revo has over its competitors using this software goes beyond a good integration. You actually get the premium Volumio membership for free with the product, so it's something that certainly needs to be considered in with the price, because it comes in at $85 a year. The premium membership adds multi-room playback, cloud-based backup, CD ripping and playback via an attached drive, as well as integrations to internet radio, Quobas, Tidal, and high res audio services, in addition to other streaming options such as AirPlay, Rune, and UPnP. Taking a look at the outside, I really like the overall build quality and design here. It's an aluminum case with a very simple front, really just one single button. Red in standby mode, green when it's booting up, and blue when it's on and ready. Flipping it around, we're greeted with a fair number of connections, starting left to right. First, our high-speed USB for connecting external drives, or that CD drive I mentioned previously. An Ethernet port, there's also a Wi-Fi connection here, 
And that's kind of nice because there's no visible antenna. I think that really helps to clean up the look a bit. Then there's a micro SD slot, likely for an external library, and below that, HDMI output. And that'll actually display the Volumio interface on a monitor or a TV. I actually took this a step further and paired it with a small seven inch touchscreen. I think it was only around $50. It requires two connections, the HDMI for video, and then you can use one of the other USB options for touch controls and power to the screen. It's an interesting aspect of this streamer, and for those who really enjoy a screen for track details, it's a simple solution that allows you to operate the entire streamer without opening the app. Getting into the digital outputs and really where the Revo shines, the AES EBU plug is up first, next to that the coax connection, and finally a USB port dedicated to your DAC connection. The SPDIF and AES EBU outputs have galvanic isolation and power filtering, and the USB digital output has extensive power filtering and a dedicated clock. Going into a bit further, the signal output is buffered with a series of Schmidt trigger inverters, then sent to the one-to-one -one transformers with high bandwidth for galvanic isolation. The signal output stage has its own dedicated low noise supply and its own ground plane. The USB connection, not to be outdone, is heavily filtered with a series of LC blocks. Each LC block has electrolytic capacitors and low value ceramic capacitors for filtering and high frequency noise. The clock input for the USB hub is from a high precision active clock with its own low noise power supply and ground plane. The USB port itself also has its own dedicated ground plane as well. And wrapping that area up, we also get into the power input and the on and off switch. The digital out section as well as the DC input are areas I wanna talk a little bit more about. There's without a doubt ones and zeros being exchanged in all streamers. So why or how could they sound different? It's not a simple topic and it often carries a lot of strong opinions from both sides. One group feels like you should spend a premium on things like this Revo or Eversolo products or well beyond that. Others say grab that Weem for a hundred bucks and send it, no difference. I can hear a difference straight away between the hundred dollar Weem and the Revo. These are not large game changing differences. And up front, I wanna tell you, I would always suggest spending the money on the speaker first, and then move down the line to things like the amplifier, DAC, streamer, etc. Chase the heavy hitter items, and then fine tune and really dial in your system. The strange part about all of this is, no one really seems to be able to pin down why they sound different. Lots of different thoughts here, and my personal take on all of this covers a couple of fronts that all come back to noise, really. A really simple source of noise is the power supply, so it makes sense that the Revo, who has much more extensive power filtering than something like the Wii Mini, will come across cleaner, or whatever flowery word you want to use here. Generally, this is described as harshness being taken away or sibilance reduced. I think that's one way to describe it, but it's possibly just less noise or disturbance presenting in a blacker background. You won't really know you're hearing any extra noise until it's removed, so it's possibly why some reviewers use descriptive words such as a veil was removed and the details shine through after a power supply upgrade. I feel the other moves the Volumio team made contribute to the same thought. Galvanic isolation for the digital outputs, things like that, that go a step further in reducing potential noise. This along with the intentional designs to reduce electromagnetic interference, as well as a well-implemented digital clock. So is there an absolute science behind all of this? I don't really believe there's anything that comes across as absolute. But Volumio certainly covered all their bases with this one, hitting on all the obvious points for a really clean sound. The variable I didn't mention here was the software itself. It's another common topic that different apps and how they're implemented result in changes in the presentation. And that leads me to my next topic on the sound review. The sound review won't be long as it does what it's supposed to well. It outputs the digital in a fashion that is clean, transparent, without any hint of distortion. In comparison to the DMPA6, which I purchased at released, it comes across a little more neutral it seems. Is it the software, Volumio versus Eversolo native apps? I'm really not sure. So that's pretty much it, and I think that's how a sound review should go on a streamer, unless it has flaws. Otherwise, the praise should be an unaltered signal. It's not a perfect device, but honestly, I can't say I've ever had a perfect device in for review. I'd like to see a few changes here, such as triggers, it just simplifies everything. There really shouldn't be any need to physically turn on or off the device with the button or the app. I'd really like to see an I2S connection as this is more of a premium device. It'd be nice to see that as a digital output option as I feel many want to pair this with a premium DAC who offer it and it seems to be a favorite for many, especially the Denifrips crowd. Lastly, I wouldn't complain if it had a remote. Take a page from some of the competition and offer volume control as well as some favorites. 
Not necessary, but often appreciated. What this one does well, the price is actually fair in the premium streamer market when you consider the inclusion of their premium software that opens you up to things like DSP or various other streaming integrations. I think it's a really well-built unit. I really like the style and it's not something I feel like I need to hide away. It's a great sounding streamer for whatever reason. It just has a really nice sound. Is it the power filtering, galvanic isolation, or the software? I honestly can't say. Let's just peg it as all of the above. It's a form and function device and I really enjoy it. Thanks for watching today. If you could please like and subscribe, it makes a huge difference for my channel. Let's grow this thing together. Thanks. Take care.